So with the new Keyshot 8, um, you can now create multiple image styles. And these image styles are now real time. You don't really need to render your object anymore so that you can start tweaking how much bloom you want or how much uh, effect you post effect you want. You can now do them real time directly here in Keyshot. And I will show you how. So if you go over to the image tab which we have here and we choose to create a new image style so i'm just going to click on this button to get image one style i can choose to come here and add some vignette to my scene i can also choose to come here and add some uh, chromatic aberration to my scene as well okay you can see that effect happening okay now i can also choose to come here because i have all of this uh, shiny stuff here i can choose to come here and increase the bloom intensity and actually go ahead and also increase the bloom radius just to uh, have that feel in my scene as well other things i can do is come over to the adjustment and i can play with the exposure value bring it down raise it all the way up and I can also play with the gamma as well. Now this is quite interesting because it doesn't need you to render for you to be able to see what you're going to do. If I switch over to the default, you can see what the default looks like. And if I come back to the image uh, style one, I can have this. Other things we can do is we can go ahead and lock this up and we can also open it. If you look at the lower side of this object here, you're going to see I have one which is basic and the next one is uh, photographic. Now with the photographic one, let's go over and just uh, lock this and create a new one. Now if I switch over to the photographic, what I have is the same settings which I have. But right now you see I have much more richer dark shades. Okay, you can see what it looks like here and you can see what... It looks like here and I can also do the whole uh, vignette thing like I did previously but you see the vignette here is slightly different from the one which we had here this one seems to be much more forgiving than the previous than the one for the uh, photographic stuff except I push it all the way high okay so if I come down to these other parts you see I can also add uh, some sort of chromatic operations as well, like we do in the previous one. But now you would notice that I have this thing called color. Okay, so I can use the color to actually turn up and turn down the saturation of the objects I have in my scene. I can also use the vibrance to also turn up and turn down how much vibrance these objects have. Within the curve, I can come around here and I can play with a curve value if I turn this on. I can play with the curve value uh, that my object has either directly from here or I can just go ahead and play with the sliders. So I want to add some more whites so that means I'm going to have much more darker shades. If I go ahead and turn up the highlights, you will also notice that I can also increase that as well. The shadows will go ahead and increase the light, the, the white, or if I push it down to this other side, I get much more darker shadows. Okay, so these are things that you can do. But one of the downsides of this, which I don't really like, is the fact that I cannot go ahead and change the background. For example, if I lock this here and I just want to have them locked so that I can come back to this general one. If I have this locked down here with the gray background, if I go over to the environment and I come here where I have the color set to gray, if I switch it to a color like this and say, okay, when I go back to this place, I am expecting to get a nicer look. Let's say the same look that I left it as, let, because I left it as gray, I'm having, I hope it was, that good that you can just have multiple iteration of the the background the same way you can have multiple iteration of the image style so let's say it saves the image color for uh, each of the individual styles I made but despite that the whole 
system here is nice and I love it and I love the work that has been put into creating this and it's going to save a lot of time for the renderers to render their stuff and start tweaking them in post so right out of here you can know what you need to exactly do in Photoshop instead of uh, spending so much time getting it to render out and playing with it before exporting it uh, finally from Keyshot. So if you love this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. If there are things you want me to talk about in this channel, don't forget to put them down in the comment section below. And so far, so good, guys. Peace.